I'm here at St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Portland, Oregon, and today is the fifth day in our novena to the holy face of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us continue with the pious reflections of Sister Marie of Saint-Pierre. And today's reflection is on Veronica and the Good Thief. The Savior taught the sister the two persons had rendered him a signal service during his passion. The first was Veronica, who glorified his holy humanity by wiping his adorable face on the path to Calvary. The second was the good thief, who from the cross, as from a pulpit, preached in defense of his cause and confessed his divinity whilst it was being blasphemed by the other thief and by the Jews. Our Lord made me to understand, she says, the two persons were to be our models and protectors, one of whom was Veronica, the model of persons of her sex, who are not charged with defending his cause in public by their voices, but on whom it is incumbent to wipe his holy face by their prayers, praises, and adorations. The other person was the good thief, the special model of men, and of the ministers of the church who are called in the work of reparation publicly to defend the honor of God and to proclaim his glory in the face of those who outrage it. Therefore, as a recompense, the Savior gave to St. Veronica his adorable portrait and bestowed on the good thief an immediate entrance into his heavenly kingdom. Our Lord promised the sister not to show himself less magnificent toward those who, by their prayers, their adorations, or their writings, should boldly defend his cause before men without being afraid of either their ill will or their powers. And now let us turn to the fifth day of the Novena. But we begin on the first day with the, uh, uh, let's see here. Hmm. Of course, when you have to turn to a page, <laughs> you can't get to it. All right, so we're going to start with at the commencement from the first day. In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Lord, I desire to seek thy face. Do not thou repel me far from it on account of my sins. Do not remove thy Holy Spirit from me. Let the light of thy face shine upon me. Teach me in the way of thy commandments. And now we turn to the fifth day of our novena. And this day is entitled, The Holy Face in the House of Caiaphas. It is the night of the Passion. Jesus, after a derisive judgment, has been disdainfully sent with his hands tied to the house of Caiaphas. Let us consider first the outrages. He is at the mercy of a band of servants and of soldiers who make it a cruel sport to load him with outrages and insults of every kind. <clears throat> his holy face is their target. The whole night it has to suffer the most humiliating insults which can be invented by the malice of men and the rage of devils. They outrage him by blows. They wound him and cover him with blood by giving him cuffs with their hands. They soil him with spits, a kind of insult particularly felt by the Savior. He complains of it by the mouth of the prophet. They were not afraid to spit in my face. And when predicting to his apostles the passion which he was about to undergo at Jerusalem, he specified the spits which would be given him. The Son of Man shall be spit upon. Let us consider now the conversion of St. Peter. In the midst of this ignominious treatment, what patience on the part of the Savior. What serenity, what sweetness. He does not complain. He does not murmur. He prays. He loves. He expiates and repairs the outrages which our sins have inflicted and still inflict on the majesty of his heavenly Father. At the very culmination of his ignominies, 
his sorrowful face finds means to perform an act of mercy and of ineffable, ineffable charity. It casts its eyes on the Prince of the Apostles and raises him up after his fall. Peter was there, at some distance from him, an unfaithful disciple, mingling in the crowd of the enemies of his master. He had shamefully denied him no less than three times. All at once he encounters the divine eyes fixing upon him a look of gentle reproach, of compassion, and of love. It is enough. The sight of that sorrowful face, of that ray of light which issues from those sad eyes, pierces the heart of the apostle. Penetrated with shame and repentance, he turns aside and weeps bitterly. Now let us consider the application to ourselves. O divine face, who raisest up and transformest wandering souls, cast thine eyes upon me, have pity on me. I have not, after having offended God, responded to the attractions of thy grace, or if I have shed a few tears, they have only been the result of a passing feeling of humility, of a sadness in which self-love had a larger part than true repentance. Since thou art, O adorable face, a son of justice able to soften our hearts and to purify our consciences, burn and consume in me all that is contrary to the purity of thy love. May thy heavenly rays inflame me and make me weep secretly over my past offenses. I also... I am an unfaithful disciple, or rather, I have been, but will no longer be one. Thou hast been so merciful as to forgive me my revolts and to turn away thine eyes from my sins. No, my Jesus, whatever may happen and whatever it may cost me, I will not renounce thee any more. I will, on the contrary, glorify thee by my penitence and my good works. Let us pray the act of contrition here given. Lord, turn away thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. I detest them and desire to make reparation for them. And the virtue to be practiced. Have the courage of your faith. Do not fear the eyes and the words of men when there is a question of a duty to be fulfilled or of a fault to be avoided. A spiritual bouquet. Jesus looked at Peter, and Peter wept bitterly. And let us pray together. I have called upon thy face with my whole heart. Have pity on me according to thy promises. Let the light of thy face shine upon me. Save me in thy mercy. Lord, I shall not be confounded because I have called upon thee. Let us pray. God, all-powerful and merciful, grant we entreat thee that, venerating the face of thy Christ, disfigured in his passion because of our sins, we may deserve to contemplate it eternally in the splendor of the glory of heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Join me tomorrow for our sixth day in the Novena to the Holy Face of our Lord Jesus Christ. And don't miss a day of prayer with us.